Here comes the bell. The purity of sound arriving to the ears. And so again, we come together for Tuesday tea time. Our different ages and ethnicities and our cultural heritages and religious backgrounds, our different abilities and socioeconomic groups, sexual orientation and gender identity that we come together with these various complexities honoring each of us in this practice that we undertake. And that we practice for the benefit of all beings and acknowledging the communities of indigenous peoples in our area, the tribes of the Grand Ronde and the Cowlets and the Solettes, acknowledging those who have been in this area, this confluence of the Willamette and Columbia River Gorge for 11,000 years, recognizing that we have a community of many diverse native peoples and we can, they continue to live and work here and we respectfully acknowledge and honor the indigenous communities of the past and the present and the future and acknowledging <clears throat> also the Buddhist lineages that have come to us, come to the United States from China, Sri Lanka, Japan, Korea, Thailand, Cambodia, Vietnam, Theravadan, to bring us the opportunity to understand the teachings of the Buddha. And so we go to refuge. Buddham saranam gachami, danang saranam gachami, sangang saranam gachami, dutiampi buddham saranam gachami, dutiampi danang saranam gachami, Dutiampi sangang saranam gachami. Tatiampi budang saranam gachami. Tatiampi danang saranam gachami. Tatiampi sangang saranam gachami. We take refuge in the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha. The teachings that show us the way that guide us to see for ourselves what happens when we cling and attach ourselves to ideas and opinions and what can happen that there is a possibility of freedom and the letting go. So we have the opportunity to hear the Dhamma and to practice in Sangha together, our Tuesday tea time, as well as all the other Sanghas in our Western communities around us and beyond that ripples through countries and generations and hundreds of years. And yet we sit right here in this simple practice. grounding ourselves in the body. Noticing gravity, 
grounding ourselves in our seat. Noticing our feet on the floor. Coming to the breath. And observing it. Where do we notice the most? If we use our nostrils, there might be warmth and coolness. If we notice it more at the belly, the diaphragm, we'll notice pressure and the release of pressure. At both of those places and throughout the body, we might notice tingling, pressure, warmth, coolness. It's a way of keeping us in the present moment to be interested, to be present with one specific anchor over and over again. So we can use our breath or that touch point at the buttocks on the chair or the feet on the floor to return to when the mind is wandering. And we take this time as we're beginning our practice to hold ourselves in kindness, to hold ourselves in gentleness. I read a quote recently from Jack Cornfield, meditation is not a grim duty. It's meant to be an act of care and we live in a culture that's forgotten how we can take care of ourselves. And one part of that care, even though at first it feels unfamiliar, is just to be quiet for a little bit and listen. Then there are things in us that we know, intuitions and understandings that come for how to navigate our life from what really matters. And so we settle to be present 
and learning how to navigate our life. from a place that really matters as we bring mindfulness to the forefront. What is happening in the mind right now? What is happening in the heart? What arises? What do we notice? Mindfulness being present. Moment to moment awareness of whatever arises. Being curious when we find ourselves aware in the moment of whatever's going on, can we watch what's happening come to an end? Where do we wake up in the middle of a thought? Can we see whatever's happening pass by? Can we notice directly the impermanent nature of everything that arises? And we may notice when we're in a positive frame of mind, recognizing that, that recognition can tend to strengthen a wholesome state of mind.
holding ourselves gently and with compassion as we have genuine interest with what is presenting itself. We can return to the anchor of the breath or the touch point, begin again to be aware, let mindfulness show us what's happening next, see what we're aware of, see where awareness arises in the body and the mind, sensations. It can be a constant stream of recognizing moment after moment, quickly acknowledging, seeing the moment arise and pass away, streaming on, phenomenon rolling on, We stay aware to see the arising and passing away, or we might want to push away something that's unpleasant or grasp at something that's pleasant. But it's all in the stream of mindfulness. As Andrew Olensky says, the tragedy is that nothing actually exists. It is all passing away the instant it forms. The beauty 
is that we have the means to be aware of this, a moment to know the profound poignancy of this tiny corner of reality. Passing away the instant it forms, conditioned things arising and passing away to each of our senses, the way we create our reality at the ear door, the eye door, the touch door, the taste door, the smell door, and the thought door. But we have this amazing opportunity in training and taming the fire in the mind to stay cool, to see everything that arises and passes with curiosity, with investigation if it's unskillful, worth letting go of, skillful, we incline the heart and mind in that direction. Cultivating that kindness for ourselves.
And as we do this, holding ourselves gently and kindly, we can uplift the heart and mind, have that internal smile, the privilege that we have of being born human and being able to practice together, no matter how hard it is or how boring it is or whatever it is that's going on, it's always different. We have the ups and downs, the beautiful moments, the sad moments. And we can have it all within a, a heart that's uplifted, a gentle smile on our face. Balancing the paradoxes. Wonder and grief. Pleasure and pain, gain and loss, fame and disrepute, ill repute. Everything coming and going. And so it is this reminder of our capacity for awareness. It's awareness then that is liberation, that natural resting in awareness. Problems disappear, they come and go. This sense of myself or resentment about having responsibilities or whatever might be on our minds ceases if we can trust in the awareness. Trusting in the Buddha, the Dhamma and the Sangha. Trusting in the refuges. Recognizing the stillness. This deliverance of the heart. The still point. 
just recognizing it, knowing it through awareness, not through seeking it or trying to get it, but just through relaxing, opening, being at ease, trusting and receiving both pleasant and unpleasant experiences. And so as we may notice tiredness or sleepiness once we settle down sometimes, as the Buddha said in the Sutta Nipata, rouse yourself, sit up, resolutely train yourself to attain peace. Do not let the king of death, seeing you are careless, lead you astray and dominate you. We can always see Mara lurking around the corner. I see you, Mara. Rouse ourselves, sit up, resolutely train ourselves. Sort of sounds like a paradox, doesn't it? Resolutely train yourself to attain peace. But we do it breath by breath, relaxed and open, with mindfulness and awareness and wisdom. First of all, he was on.
sometimes things come to our hearts and minds that seem unbearable. And burying the unbearable is the deepest root of compassion. When we bear what we think we cannot bear, part of our ego slips away. We become compassion. We don't have compassion, we are compassion. May we hold ourselves in that compassion. And when some, sometimes when some of these deepest unbearable opportunities come to the present, rise to the surface, may we let true compassion be there both for ourselves and others to go beyond empathy to being the experience of another, being that instrument of compassion. And as we foster this compassion for ourselves, may we also bring other people to mind, another person to mind, for which we may have compassion, someone close to us, a friend, a loved one, a teacher, knowing that they too have suffering moments. May we hold them in compassion. May they hold themselves in compassion. And may we let this sense of compassion, this kindness that goes toward empathy and beyond to include others in our heart space. Who did you see recently that you don't know that you were able to bring compassion to? Or what situation arose in your life that you could shed the light of kindness and compassion on? Something might have been difficult or may still be difficult. Holding in our heart, mindful and aware, developing the open-heartedness of kindness and compassion for ourselves and other beings. It feels like this right now. May this sense of compassion, kindness that falls naturally and opens to another person's suffering. 
for those that we don't know, can't see. For creatures and sentient beings that may be suffering. May we hold them in kindness and compassion. May all beings, seen and unseen, known and unknown, may they be held in compassion and kindness, just as we are held in others' compassion and kindness. People that we don't know, chanting the chant of loving kindness. May all beings be at ease. May all beings be free from suffering, be free from enmity and danger, be free from anxiety. And may we realize that we are responsible for our own actions and thoughts, whether they be skillful or unskillful, and so we continue in kindness and compassion to be on this path to freedom, this gradual path to awakening. Anicca vata sankara upadavaya domino upakitava merchanti te sam vipassamo sukho. All conditioned things arise and pass away. Seeing this clearly brings the greatest happiness. Which is peace. May the merit of our practice be of benefit to all sentient beings. And may these moments of practice, no matter what was going on in the heart and mind, bring more understanding to the joy that the practice can bring us. Each moment that we wake up, each moment that we find ourselves waking up to whatever the situation is. Thank you for your practice. Great joy.